Johnny Manziel was booked Wednesday in relation to a misdemeanor charge stemming from a domestic violence complaint by his ex-girlfriend and was released on a $1,500 bond. He appeared in court this morning, hours after posting bail. Johnny Manziel had this to say on Twitter, which has since been deleted. Just thankful I had a shirt this time. Manziel was referring to his shirtless mugshot when he was arrested as a freshman in college for carrying fake identification and fighting. Not too funny, Skip. Uh, no. Where does he go from here? <clears throat> By the way, Stephen A., before I answer Molly's question, it, it was another bad sign that apparently Johnny Manziel isn't even taking this misdemeanor charge that he's facing right now in Dallas, Texas, all that seriously. That tweet that he did take down, again, referring to a drunken brawl that he was arrested for at the end of his freshman year at Texas A&M, late at night outside a nightclub near the campus, Texas A&M. This is, this is another sign that he's still operating as if he's Johnny Football. Above it all, who knows, maybe he even thinks he's above the law right now. My point is to you, Stephen A., and I'm sick and tired of talking about it, as you get on this show also. We used to both have a lot of respect for him. I had great respect for him as a player. He still hasn't hit rock bottom just yet. Obviously, the NFL is going to react to whatever the court does to Johnny Manziel and suspend him for X games. I'm pretty sure it's gotten to the point where no team is going to be in the mood to take a chance on Johnny Manziel. And if and when Johnny realizes he's all but gone from the NFL, that his future in the NFL is all but shot, maybe he'll finally break down and swallow what's left of his pride and give in and give up and do what all of his friends and family have been trying and trying and failing to get him to do. Let's go to rehab for a long time, for up to a year, where you, you give heart and soul to rehab. You, you, you invest totally in it, as opposed to what he did in Cleveland last offseason, when he went for, I don't know what it was, maybe a couple of months, six, eight weeks. It was all lip service. It was all for show. It was all just to, to get the public and, and his team off his back. And it obviously did not take because as soon as he stepped out of rehab, he went right back to consuming alcohol. He's got all kinds of problems. We talked about them. I'm not sure the depth of all of his substance abuse problems. But the only hopeful sign I've heard Stephen A. in the last month or so is that last week, Justin Bieber played a concert in Cleveland. And Johnny Manziel went back to Cleveland to attend that concert with his buddy Justin. During that trip, he consented to meet with Josh McCown, Brown's quarterback, obviously, when Johnny was there. Josh became like a big brother to Johnny at age 35 to Johnny's now 23. Johnny will listen to Josh. Josh is, we just talked to a Christian man here in Lecrae, Josh is, is a Christian man through and through. He is to be trusted, to be believed, and he's trying to get Johnny to give in and give up and get the help that I just detailed. He thinks he's got a shot, uh, Josh McCown does. I hope so. The family and friends are rooting to jo for Josh as the last hope here. But he still hasn't completely reached Johnny. Johnny's just receptive to Josh and not receptive to anybody else, to his parents, to Kevin Sumlin, at, obviously the head coach at A&M, to any of his former friends who are now completely former friends. No correspondence with, it, with any of them. Johnny's on what a lot of his friends think is a death trip here. And we've talked about it on the show. I, I think he's perilously close to getting into big trouble. I'm hoping that Josh McCown will be the last hope to maybe save him and get him to give in and go to rehab. Well, it's important that you understand that Johnny Manziel in all likelihood is not going to be receptive. Why? Because he's, uh, it appears that he's receptive to alcohol potentially receptive to drugs yep. and obviously receptive very much so to partying. And so when those three things are in the way, you're not going to be receptive to another human being because the allure and the attraction of substances, of substances and environments are more addictive than counsel from other human beings. It's just that simple. And so when you look at it from that perspective, again, being in court, misdemeanor charge, 
knowing that he probably was going to get out on bond, $1,500, if I remember correctly, yep. not to mention the fact that he's not really concerned about going to jail. Um, his whole thing is that I'm going to be free to do what I want to do, so what's the big deal? But what it shows you is how alarmed we should all be, meaning those who care about Johnny Manziel, because we were thinking about him as the football player. He supposedly wants to play football, but his behavior makes him nuclear. It means that no one is going to touch him. And when it comes to the National Football League, seeing a tweet like that nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, executives in the NFL are going to react just the way you did. They're going to look at something like that, and they're going to say, he still doesn't get it. Yep. We don't need him here. So in the end, what this comes down to is not only Johnny Manziel needing to get the help that he needs, but it's also the NFL, the Players Association, and beyond working in concert with one another to make sure he gets the help he needs from them, not just by ensuring that he goes and gets legitimate help, but they can also help him by ostracizing him from their product, their brand. You have to literally contribute to that rock bottom feeling he must touch before he sits there and tries to resurrect himself. Because as you have told me on many, many occasions, you know this through your, ex your family experience with alcohol. I know this through friends and family experiences with drugs. You usually have to hit rock bottom. You do before you elevate yep. yourself. And it, it appears he hasn't done that yet. No. Nope. So sometimes that tough love is necessary. And what you have to do is facilitate the rock bottom feeling in a sense where it doesn't jeopardize his life. Yeah, we're gonna ostracize you. We're gonna help you, but at the same time, you're not gonna be allowed to play football. You're not gonna be allowed to do this, that, and a third. Because if you give him that kind of tough love while not throwing him to the wolves, then ultimately you have a shot at resurrecting him. The same thing may ultimately end up being required of Josh Gordon and others. My only problem with all of this, and it's not a problem per se, because it's not my problem. <laughs> I just wish the best for Johnny Manziel, just like I wish the, the best for Josh Gordon. Johnny Manziel comes from an affluent background, per se. Am I accurate in saying that, Skip? Yeah. I believe I am. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's going to be all right as long as he's alive because he'll have a roof over his head, food on his plate, clothes on his back. Yet here we are periodically coming, tr attempting to come to the aid of Johnny Manziel while there are so many others who don't come from such a background, who don't have that figurative cushion. And we don't talk about them nearly as much as we should. And they may very well be more worthwhile than Johnny Manziel Maybe. is at this point, unfortunately. I, I hear you. But remember, his father is on public record as saying he fears his son won't last until his 24th birthday. So, yeah, but we also care about what his father has to say. If Josh Gordon's parents or, 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 or somebody else's or, you know, if their, if their parents came out, you know, Alden, Alden Smith or somebody and their parents came out, how much would we care? It's a oh, question. Okay. I don't know the answer. All right. It's a question. I would like to think I would care, but I can only speak for me. I know you would. I know you would. That's why you're my man. <laughs> but, again, how many would care? Yeah, it's a good yeah. question. I ain't talking about skip. Yeah. No, we get it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's leave it there. Uh, when we come back, we'll head back to the NBA playoffs. Are the Raptors being overlooked? Their head coach thinks so. LeBron James shouldn't be so quick to talk about playing. And uh, we'll break that down. Actually, we're going to switch gears to Vogel out in Indy. That's what's up next. The Raptors will look to even the series tonight against the Heat. Stephen A., will they get it done? Who wins? I think they get it done in game two. I think that Valanciunas sees the ball more. He attacks us on white side, and they play high energy knowing they can't afford to go to Miami down 0-2. I think Toronto wins game two tonight. And I think Kyle Lowry will snap out of his slump and have a big night before the home crowd that will propel them to 1-1 one -to -one going to Miami. But I still think Dwayne Wade and company will win this series.
All right. I don't see them going up 2-0. I just don't see that. For Stephen A., Skip Bayless, I'm Molly Karam. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great day.